La máquina musical. It's time for Farm City News Day by Agnet Media on News Talk 1450 KTIP, the South Valley's news talk leader. The California drought gets worse and worse and worse. Two years is bad, three years a catastrophe, four years unheard of. And yet, that's what our richest farm state is staring at right now. Good morning, Portobello Coordinating Council. The 211 is referring you. Okay, what town do you live in? Shoes, so whatever you might need. The drought has been overwhelming. It's pushed every limit with money, our time, our space sometimes. And our families are desperate. They're desperate for water. Dios es bueno. God is good. Estamos creyendo que este invierno I, I tr vamos a recibir la lluvia que necesitamos. Dios es bueno. Den un aplauso a Dios. I've been calling the east side of Porterville Ground Zero. You know, if you drive around the east side of Porterville, you're in a different country. The people in Porterville, hardworking, honest, humble, they're really trying to make it. They're really trying to survive. They're really trying to, to get ahead the best way that they can. The drought has affected uh, all of this valley, you know, from Oregon to, to Mexico. But uh, I think Porterville is the, is the community that has been affected the most. Cuando agarramos estas casitas que mi mamá, de, del sacrificio de ella de trabajar, las compró, Esta es mi niña, no es mí. Tengo cinco niños. Nunca, nunca imaginó uno que se fuera a acabar el agua. El señor, el vecino, me pasó agua con una manguera y me estuvo dando por todo un año. Y ahora, en el 2015, ya me dijo que no iba, ya no me iba a dar agua porque se le iba a ir en su pozo. Dije, pues, ¿y ahora qué voy a hacer? And I have hot water from here to the east side of Portable over there. And I feel like, you'll see I fill up this big tanks in front of the houses. I fill up like, like 16 tanks a day. I think it's gonna come a time where the people are gonna be stealing the water, like stealing. <laughs> That's why they put that lock on there. They'll come and fill up. The community has been suffering for a long time already, you know. We have lost about anywhere between 18 and 20,000 jobs due to the drought. We're losing families too, you know, families moving from this area to say Oregon, Washington State, or other parts of the country. Some reporters from New York could not understand what it meant to have a hole in the back of your yard, that's your well, and they depend on this well that the river will fill it with water for their daily domestic use. And there is no water, there is nothing. So these families are getting up in the morning to nothing. You can't flush your toilets, you can't brush your teeth, you cannot take a shower. Simple as that, and you're left like, it's a panic, it's like, what am I gonna do? My kids need water. This map represents uh, a lot of the people, what we call the east side of Porterville. We're, we're right here, and, and these are, all these little dots represent addresses. Each one of these has a well. There's probably about 600 houses out here, and of that, probably about 400 of them are out of water. Most of these are 20, 30 feet deep, and they drill down, and, and in some cases, they actually pound a pipe into the ground, and then they put a pump on it, and they start sucking the water out. The morale of the community, it's, it's very low. You know, there's, there's no hope. They're just surviving. They're just living, like, uh, on a daily basis, you know, like, let me deal with today, and hopefully we can make it to, through tomorrow. <laughs> because of the voices that we don't have, the families who don't feel that can voice their opinion, whether it's those families are undocumented or they have been brought up to just humble themselves and, and do as people have told them to do.
Doing dishes is a pain in the butt. It's just rough, everything. Going to the bathroom takes like almost a gallon every time. Every day living sucks, sucks like this. I feel so dirty at times. I'm like, oh my God. I just want to go to a running water. Like when I go into the store and I use the bathroom or whatever, or you know, I'm like, oh, running water. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my, and I'm a clean person. You know, I'm like, oh my God, that's so gross. Nobody really realizes how much water is a luxury. Really, they don't. It really is. It's a big luxury. When we got together at task force meetings with the Office of Emergency Services, there were uh, three organizations that were chosen by them to be part of the drought relief efforts for families in the Port of Valeria. So we have Office of Emergency Services at the top, and they designate to uh, self-help who buys the tanks for families to fill up with water. Under them is CSET, who actually plums and hires workers uh, to plumb the PVC pipes. After that is the United Way, who are responsible for making sure that those tanks are filled twice a month. Unfortunately, we haven't seen that. I, I think it's never been done before, the, the stuff that we're doing here. The drought as an emergency you know, disaster has really never happened before. There's 1,500 plus disconnected things that you have to go to 1,500 plus locations to try to help them and oh, by the way, you can't do anything long-term on the property for them. That's not written in any emergency plan anywhere in the country, conceivably anywhere in the world. So we're, we're literally having to make this up as we go. Why didn't the government, you know, uh, came in right away, you know, to help these families, you know, and see what could be done, you know? They're saying that they, maybe they can drill new wells, you know, on the east side of Porterville. Well, that's good, you know, but it's gonna take anywhere between four, five, even six years. I mean, by then, there won't be nobody here. As it is right now, you know, some, some of the donations of water that we've been getting, some of them have stopped altogether, you know. If this was Los Angeles, if this was Oakland, San Francisco, Chicago, New York, uh, I, I do believe, honestly, I do believe that the government's response would have been way different, you know, from what it has been here. If, if it wasn't for the volunteers, people would not be getting help. Uh, the truth, I think that they really don't care because basically all the people that live right here on the um, east side are Hispanic. So what does it say about us as a society? I think you might say things like, we never care for these families. We never care for this community. Nobody has came from the White House and the President. It's only been people that are giving water. I'm directly asking, begging the President to look into this. I mean, we are his people. If it gets really bad, yeah, I'll have to move. Where they're up, somewhere they're drowning, some place where they have a lot of water. <laughs> yeah. I'll have, I'll have to let my house go and go with my family somewhere else. Now, if another winter comes by and get no rain, I really can't tell you what, what is going to happen. A ghost town possibility. It's very real. Realistically, if you look at history over time across the country, probably across anywhere else in the world, you take away the, the factor that keeps the community there and that community will fall apart.